This channel is designed for adults viewing only and certain videos will contain rated M for mature video games, featuring realistic violence, gore and suggestive themes. If you are not an adult, do not view the content on this channel. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned. Get ready to take a trip down every lane. We'll be showed off our Sega Saturn collection. And uh, this is a request that was made by one of our users. So, I did show off one of my other collections at one point. So now we're going to show off the Sega Saturn collection. I'll we'll start off with loose games. I have uh, Hexen. WWF In Your House. A WrestleMania The Arcade Game. We have a uh, Thunderstrike. We have a uh, Daytona USA Championship Edition. Tunnel B1. NASCAR 98. Andrade Racing. Uh, Blazing Dragons, which is one of my favorite Saturn games. Definitely awesome. And we have a uh, Brain Dead 13. We have a Jurassic Park game right here, and I think there's another. You see that the disc is a little cracked right there, but it still works. So, uh, this is Battle Stations. Uh, Mass Destruction for Sega Saturn. Gex. So, a lot of uh, North American games right here. We've got uh, The Legend of Osis. Career Crisis, Impact Racing, which I I love that racing game. I think that's actually pretty one of my favorites. And we have a uh, Off World Interceptor Extreme and a uh, Starfighter. And we have the uh, Revolution X. Just uh, like that Errol Smith game, I, th I think that game's actually pretty cool in the Saturn. And of course, we have Rampage World Tour. Those are my loose games right there. Loose copies. Let's see if we can get them together and piled up. Put those in the corner. Now these are games that have in long cases, which I really don't care for long cases at all. The reason why I bought all those. These cases take up a lot of space. Look how many games I have right here compared to this. This is one game versus probably 20, 25 games. Center Ring Boxing. Now if you want to see a, a real crazy game collector that keeps this stuff complete and really good condition, probably doesn't have any loose copies at all, uh, John Hancock. He has some crazy stuff. Mysteria, The Realms of Lore. It's like an RPG game of some sort. Of course, I have a nice queen copy of Asto. Nice, good platformer. Kind of reminds me of uh, Tomba on the PlayStation a little bit. Now, this is the weird thing about it. It has, like, no... I mean, it is, I mean, what the hell is up with that? If you put it on the shelf, you can't even tell which game it is. Kind of aggravates me. I don't know if that's a misprint or what. We got Sonic 3D Blast. Definitely a pretty good game. We got a uh, busted copy of Busted Move 2, the arcade edition. And you see that it's busted. What's up to his name? Busted. We have Bug. And I would like to have Bug 2, but I don't have that one. Like, see, this is the first Bug game, and it's actually pretty good. Nice platformer. And we have uh, Road Rash for the uh, Sega Saturn. Put that one up there. 
Nice uh, road rash game. And we have a uh, shining wisdom. You can win uh, ten thousand dollars. There's details inside. Action RPG. Not exactly my type of game, but I do have a complete copy of it for some reason. Now then we have uh, Dragon Force for the uh, Sega Saturn, a complete nice clean copy of this game. Now definitely a quite the uh, famous Sega Saturn game. One of those games you cannot miss up on. You can't, you can't pass up on it is what I meant to say. But you, definitely one of those games that you definitely want to own. It costs a lot though. Dark Savior. It's another uh, interesting like RPG style game that came out on the Sega Saturn. And then of course we own a copy of uh, Worldwide Soccer. I mean look at how happy that guy is. Sega Sports. And uh, there's nothing really special about this game but it is a soccer game. Let's look at it. Supports backing up your data. Speaking of backing up your data, I mean, I have one of these guys also. I also have an action replay. So, I, for, as far as hardware goes, I'm not going to show off hardware in this uh, video. But I own a Japanese Sega Saturn and an American Sega Saturn. As you can see, this is one of my controllers right here. I own mostly all Japanese controllers because I think the controllers are better. Alright, so, uh,. Let's see if we can clear this off and let's get ready to look at the Japanese side of the Sega Saturn, my Japanese collection. This is all my American stuff right here. Nothing really spectacular, but the uh, Japanese stuff is where I tend to collect my Sega Saturn games. So let's check that out. Alright, so this is going to be our first batch of Japanese games that I'm showing off for my Sega Saturn collection. We have uh, Alone in the Dark 2. I started collecting these games probably like 15 years ago. I try to keep these in alphabetical order as much as possible. Uh, Daytona USA, the first one, and you can see that English on one side, Japanese on the other side. We have a DECA 4x4 truck racing. See if you can actually see that up close. Let me see if I can turn this light off. It's not really doing anything. Well, that's the uh, the game right there. We have a Dead or Alive. The first Dead or Alive is actually really good on the uh, Sega Saturn. Got a couple of screenshots right there. F1 Live Information. It's like a Formula One racing game. It's actually not bad. It's okay. A couple of screenshots right there. It's actually an okay racing game. This one I picked up more recent. Uh, Real Bout Fatal Fury Special SNK. Uh, this is something we're probably going to check out in the future. And of course we have a uh, Fighter Mega Mix. Definitely a great Sega Saturn game. forward here. Got a bunch of games here. Got Fighting Vipers right here. Check this out. You can't have a Sega Saturn collection without having a copy of Fighting Vipers. Great fighting game. And then we have these obscure King of the Spirit, King of the Spirit, whatever the hell you want to call that, racing game for the Sega Saturn. And again, over the years I collected a lot of Sega Saturn games. Probably I'd say I started in like 2005. This is a second copy of that, King King the Spirit 2. Basically, it's an improved version of the first one, I guess. One of my favorites, Gun Griffin 2, for the Saturn. Definitely really, really good graphics. Probably some of the best 3D graphics you'll see on the Sega Saturn. And then recently I played this as a uh, Gale Racer. Made a video on this one. 
So if you enjoy uh, some unique racing games, that's definitely one of them right there. And we have a uh, Hang On GP95. Definitely an interesting uh, game to say the least. You can actually use the uh, 3D controller with that game, and it actually works a lot better than the standard controller. And we have Henry the Explorers, or Henry, Henry Explorers. Henry Explorers. It's a light gun game. So if you want like an alternative to uh, House of the Dead or Virtual Cop, here it is. And it works with the gun too. As you'll see right here. Just for the hell of it, I'll show you that I have a Japanese light gun that happens to be probably illegal because it has no orange tip at the end. So this is the uh, Sega Saturn light gun. And it works quite well with uh, these uh, light gun games. And speaking of light gun games, we have House of the Dead right here. And this is probably one of the first games I got with the uh, Saturn that I bought like years ago. And we have this one right here, Deck Athlete. It's a little bright. Let's see if we can tone that down a little bit. Now this is like an uh, Olympic type of game right here. It's actually pretty fun. It's not bad. And of course we have our uh, famous Dragon Ball Z games right here. Pretty good. If you like Dragon Ball Z, then that's something you'll probably want to check out. One of the more obscure Japanese Sega Saturn games, Destruction Derby. Took a while to hunt this one down. You can see that on both sides it is Japanese. We have some nice Destruction Derby graphics right there. And we have uh, Dynamite Deca, which is Die Hard over in the United States. And uh, it's a pretty decent beat em up game. Uh, definitely on par with uh, like Fighting Force. Then we have a uh, Virtual On, Cyber Troopers Virtual On. And then one of my favorites right here, definitely an obscure wrestling fighting game, Blazing Tornado. Now this game right here is kind of like Fire Pro Wrestling and Saturday Night Slam Masters crammed together into one. It's actually pretty cool. Nice arcade style. Now then we have this game, Ares Adventure, which is probably one of those games that sell for very, very little because it's not that good of a game and nobody wants it. And then of course we have Fire Pro Wrestling S, Six Man Scramble. Definitely one of those uh, really, really cool Awesome uh, hidden gems on the Sega Saturn. It got some really cool looking uh, wrestling matches you can have, barbed wire matches, like exclusives, all kinds of crazy stuff. And we've got Mobile Suit Gundam Side Story 1, which happens to be inside these weird cardboard cases instead of like your normal jewel cases. And I also have the second one. And they open up like this, which is kind of weird. You have the disc in there, you have a booklet. The booklet doesn't come out. I don't have the third one yet, but I'm going to hunt that down eventually. Just keep in mind, I bought these like over 10 years ago, and I still have not hunted down the third one. Since I've been buying other games. So I have Mobile Suit Gundam, some other Gundam game that's on Saturn. I have no idea what this is, to be honest. And then of course we have our stuff of copies of Magical Hoppers. A great, nice little 3D platformer for the Sega Saturn. And uh, if you're in the United States or Europe, it's known as Pandemonium on the PlayStation or Sega Saturn. We have ourselves a copy of The Last Bronx. It's like a big ass looking case right here. Look at this. Okay, it's a fighting game. Check this out. So something that we have and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to clear this off and get ready to show you the next batch of 
Japanese Sega Saturn games have quite a bit, so stay tuned. Alright, so here we are with a copy of Funky Head Boxers. Pretty cool boxing game that's crazy. I have a still box copy of um, this game right here. It's like an Ultraman game and it has like an expansion cartridge. We have Sega Rally 1995. Sega like Touring Car. It's a very, very fast paced racing game. That game's like crazy as hell. For some reason, I have two copies of Zap Snowboarding Tricks. I think one of them kind of has a little bit of damage on it, so I have two copies. We have uh, this K1 boxing game right here. It's called, what is this called right here? K1 Boxing Fighting Illusion Show. Probably one of the better boxing kickboxing games available on the Sega Saturn. And we have the uh, Legend of K1, the best collection, which i would never played this one before, so I'm not sure what's on that. And then we have ourselves a uh, 2DO something something. It looks like a puzzle game. I'm not sure exactly what this is. I have it in my collection. And we have a uh, Panzer Dragoon Part 2. Now, what other kind of stuff do we have here? We have Wipeout. We have Winter Heat, which is another like deck athlete Olympic type game. We got Wing Arms. It's like a 3D uh, plane dogfighting type, type of game. Panzer Dragoon Part 1. Pretty common. And we got Virtual Fighter Kids. Pretty cool game. And speaking of Virtual Fighter, we have uh, Virtual Fighter Remix. Definitely a really cool version of Virtual Fighter Part 1. And then we have Virtual Fighter 2. Definitely a must-have. And of course we have the original Virtual Fighter. And what do we have here? We have uh, Victory Goal 96, which happens to be like a, a soccer game. It's compatible with your multi-tap. I don't have any of those, unfortunately. A Virtual Cop 2. Definitely a great light gun game. You saw the light gun earlier. Definitely have Probably like four like on games we can use that on. A virtual Cop Part 1. Now what else do we have here? Wow, it's getting quite a bit huge right here. We get uh, Tomb Raider. And uh, in Japan they call it Tomb Raiders with an S. For some reason I don't know why. And then we have a Robo Pit, which this game I actually never played but I have it in my collection. It's like some sort of fighting game or something. And now here's a really obscure, interesting game that I picked up. Uh, this is from TV Animation Slam Dunk. I love basketball. It's like an anime basketball game. And I, I honestly, I never played the game, but probably check that out in the future. And then we have a uh, Saturn Bomberman. Bomberman Fight, that is. Uh, this game is actually really awesome. Probably one of my favorite copies of Bomberman. And we have our Battle 97. This is a uh, basically Tokyo Drift King, Tokyo Highway Battle. Sonic Jam. Definitely a great game. We got Sonic R. You got Nights into Dreams, and uh, this is definitely uh, one of my favorites. I have, I have the 3D controller as well. And of course, we have ourselves a copy of Christmas Nights from Japan. 
Uh, definitely a great game to play during Christmas time. And then we have a uh, Wangan Dead Heat Real Arranged. This is some sort of racing game that's in like a huge case, kind of like Gran Turismo. And now you got all the uh, Japanese babes on the bottom. Look at that. And then you got the uh, screenshot of the games. Look at this. All kinds of crazy stuff going on here. And we're almost towards the end here. We got uh, this uh, Virtual Fighter New Japan Pro Wrestling. Actually, this is all Japan Pro Wrestling. An actual wrestling game on the, uh, the Sega Saturn that's actually quite obscure. Not too many people know about it. But if you look at the back of it, this game actually has really good graphics and the gameplay is actually pretty good. It's like one of those wrestling games that are really, really not too well known. And then you see there, you got Giant, giant Baba. You got the list of uh, all your characters and uh, you got a couple of Virtual Fighter characters in this game as well. Got a really strange, obscure version of Race Driven, in which this is more common to see like on a DOS computer. And there's like no, nothing on the back at all. But this is definitely a weird version of Race Driven. It actually runs pretty good too. Probably one of the better versions. And then of course we have Marvel Super Superheroes vs. Street Fighter. And it's a spear. And of course we have our X-Men vs. Street Fighter. And it's bare, probably cost-cutting measure by uh, me. As you can see, I sometimes I cheap out. So long as I can get hold of the game. And we got Street Fighter Zero Two. We got Street Fighter Zero One. And we have this game that I paid an arm in the league for. This is like a beat 'em up game. Now uh, this is a Capcom game, and it's a beat 'em up game, kind of like. Kind of resembles uh, Golden Axe, I guess. Looks like it looks. It looks a little like Golden Axe, to say the least. And I don't quite have the name of it. But as you can see, there is no English translation for this game on the case, so I can't tell you exactly what it's called. And then we have a uh, Street Fighter Zero Two Strike. So this is a different copy of Street Fighter Zero Two. I don't know exactly what the difference is. Don't bother asking, because I don't know. <laughs> and then of course we have ourselves a copy of Street Fighter Collection with Street Fighter Two. And uh, this is definitely one of my favorites. And that is my Sega Saturn collection. And there is constantly more games growing and being added to the collection. And uh, if you enjoyed that episode of Memory Lane. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and uh, comment down below and let me know what collection you want to see next. I have the PlayStation, the Nint Nintendo 64, I have uh, the 32X, Sega Genesis, which I believe I showed that collection off already. Uh, I got the Super Nintendo, the Super Famicom, the NES, the Atari. Uh, we got the Japanese PS2, Japanese PlayStation 1 as well. GameCube. Uh, we got the horrible Tiger Electronic GameCom. Show off the collection on that. And hey, well, we even have the Wii U and the Switch. We can show off collections on that as well. The uh, Switch collection is growing pretty big. And then we got the original Wii U. Still got a handful of games on that I can show off. So, uh, what collection do you want to see next? Uh, down below, comment, let me know. And we'll make that happen. I know that this Sega Saturn collection was requested to be the next to be shown off, and here it is. I hope you enjoyed the video, and just for a little bonus here, we'll show off my lit gun. Got the Sega Saturn lit gun right here, and this is a Japanese lit gun, so you'll never see a lit gun like this in the U.S. In the U.S., you're supposed to have like an orange tip at the end, but that was imported. And it's a pretty badass looking light gun, so a last Bronx for the Sega Saturn.
Now, Last Bronx is one of those obscure fighting games for the Sega Saturn. I guess widely ignored for games like Fighting Vipers, Fighter Mega Mix, and Virtual Fighter. And uh, I'll be honest, I've had this game in my collection for quite a long time, like over 10 years. And I barely played it. Because I always end up playing Fighter Mega Mix or Virtual Fighter. Now, let's, let's check out the back of it right here. This is definitely a Japanese game, of course. See a few screenshots right there. I have no idea uh, what this says right here, but if you uh, know Japanese, you may actually be able to translate that. We've got a few of the characters right here. It's like anime style, as expected. I'm uh, assuming that this game came out probably in 97, so it has a 1997 little copyright right there. Got the one or two player indication right there. For sale and use only in Japan. Well, let's pretend we didn't see that. Now, the, the box art right here, you have. Looks like a two anime characters beating the shit out of each other. Uh, it looks like one of them has like nunchucks. See, what? Well, it looks like. The one in the red outfit has like two pairs of nunchucks. And the other one has one pair. And then you have the last Bronx logo right there on the bottom. And uh, this is a really thick case, so let's see if we can uh, open this case up right here. Yeah, let's see if we can check this out. <laughs> well, that. Couldn't happen any more perfect than what it did. It's, the uh, manual popped right out. So we have uh, the arcade disc right here. There's an actual arcade disc by itself, which is a little strange. And then we have the special disc, which I have no idea what that special disc is for. There's nothing really fancy about the discs. They they look kind of land looking for the exception of just the last Bronx logo is red and of course in Japan you have your little spine label thing right here now this increases the, the uh, value of your game for, in Japan for some reason I don't know why and then you have your manual and of course in Japan the manuals are thicker and they're usually full color on most games I mean look at this What is, what is oh wow look at this I had no idea I never opened the manual up but there's apparently stickers in here too and check that out so we got that there's also like a little a little card that you can fill in it's actually shipped back uh, so it's probably like a little survey card and you know you see those in the US games also and probably over in Europe they have the same thing. It's a nice full color manual. I must say the manual feels really good quality. You got the nunchucks right there. And you actually have the name of the characters right there in English, which is quite interesting. So you got Tommy Joe, Yoko, Nagi, and quite often the uh, fighting games in Japan for Saturn were mostly in English. They just never came over here for some reason. I have no idea why. But yeah, that's the manual. You know, the usual stuff that you'd see in the, in the manual. Let's put this back in here. And, uh, like this fine label thing. And so yeah, this is a Japanese copy of The Last Bronx. We're gonna throw it into our Sega Saturn. Uh, we're going to be using the American Sega Saturn console with the uh, action replay and hopefully uh, it's not so stubborn today because usually sometimes it does act up but we're going to be playing the last Bronx so stay tuned and let's get it up and running. Hey, the game actually looks graphically really good for the Sega Saturn. It looks actually really good. Again, I've only... I, 
bought this game like years ago, probably way over 10 years ago. I want to say probably 13, 14 years ago. So this must be arcade mode. <laughs> I have no idea who these characters are. Except for the fact that we're going to be picking someone by random. You gotta take that, you son of a bitch. I have no idea what to I'm kind of playing it like as if it's so. It's like a Soul Calibur type thing, but with crazy weapons. Oh, what the hell is that? He's swinging his weapon around. That's actually pretty cool. Oh, what the hell? I'll say this game is actually. Not, it's actually challenging, I must say, because the computer doesn't play around at all. Usually in a fighting game, on the first on the first round, you can actually have a little bit of leeway. You can actually win and have a chance to learn what the moves are. This game does not mess around. You can finish her off with the hammer. How the hell does she block my hammer? But I can get away with kicking the shit out of her. Like, I just don't get it. That's my... Oh, she blocked my kick that time. She heard me. I swear my Sega Center has, like, a microphone on it. I guess you can compare this to uh, that game called Rival School on the, uh, PlayStation. Oh, he grappled me. Oh, he hit me right in the face with that stick. Oh, my God, he beat me perfect. That's embarrassing. That's a really good looking character model right there. You can see the textures. Oh my god! I almost killed him. <laughs> we have to like switch up the hammer and the kicking. We almost have not pretty much done at this point. And he wants to fight back. Yeah! Got his ass. Man, what a fight that was. So yeah, that's the last Bronx on the Sega Saturn, two discs. The second disc is like a little digital manual, if you want to say, because it will actually teach you how to play the game to a certain extent. And uh, it's a pretty cool fighting game on the Sega Saturn. And unfortunately, the, uh, the game that we're going to be playing today, which you're going to see in a second, was not released in Japan. And as you can see here, we have Rampage World Tour. So here's a uh, remake of the classic arcade game Rampage, Rampage World Tour. And as you can see here, it'd be Ralph, George, Lizzie, Ralph, George, Lizzie. Three different characters here. And I'm going to be, uh, let's see here, George. While it's true that there have been no serious side effects reported so What I love about the uh, screen right here is it actually has the C prompts from DOS. <laughs> the game is pretty self-explanatory. The only thing you have to do is destroy the buildings, eat people, be right there, kick people. Yeah, well, what the hell was that? Uh, I remember playing the PlayStation version for so damn long that eventually the game froze. Now, the Sega Saturn version, uh, this particular disc that I'm playing on right here, has froze also a few times because unfortunately eBay sellers are very dishonest and they like to sell scratched up discs. As far as the game goes, it's pretty self explanatory. You just destroy everything that you can, including uh, helicopters, you eat people, uh, destroy all the buildings, try to knock them to the ground. As you can see there, 78% destroyed. And here we are, we're on the second level. You can see here you can actually pump the building. And try to knock it off its uh, platform. Very, very effective. This game is also very, very comical as you play it. Uh, you'll see the damnedest things in this game. Including people walking around bare ass nude. As you see there, look at that! What the hell? 
course, the gameplay is very, very simplistic in this game, so if you're playing it, it's a lot more funner than watching the game itself being played. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have played this game before. And let's say this game is not meant to be anything really spectacular. It's perfect as an arcade game. It, it's the job done. So as you can see here, we have Death Breath. Yeah! You like that? Get the hell out of my way. Now everything is going to feel my breath. Well, overall, it's a pretty damn good arcade game, and I do recommend it if you guys do like the classic Rampage games. Uh, this is definitely a more comical version of Rampage. We're playing Tog King the Spirits. It's a racing game for the Sega Saturn. You see Atlas. And you can actually do widescreen on this. this. That's incredible. I guess over in Japan they probably had widescreen TVs back in the uh, the 90s. Let's uh, play the game right here. We got time trial, we got the king battle. Let's try king battle, see what the hell that is. And then we have a really awesome looking car model for Sega Saturn standards. That looks pretty cool. Look at that. That's funny, the, uh, where it says choose color, it's kind of distorted looking, it's kind of like they stretched it, like, way, way tall, so you can't even barely read it. I bought this game back when I was collecting Saturn games, like, in my prime. See, there's a time where I was collecting a lot of Sega Saturn games. I was importing quite a bit of Saturn games over from Japan. Oh yeah, the drifting on that's awesome. It's incredible. I forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, so I, uh, back in, oh, it's like probably, what a long time ago. Probably 2005, 2006, I started collecting Saturn games. I, I had a Saturn a long time ago, but probably like 98, 99, I had a Saturn. So back in 2005, I was collecting Saturn games, like I mentioned, and probably within a couple years, I collected a large variety of different games, and the drifting, you don't, you want to be careful of that. Your best bet is to take your foot off the acceleration. And then we have a nice... I love the uh, graphics in the background. Look at that. The, the uh, Sega Saturn definitely uh, had an advantage over the uh, the other consoles when it came to background graphics. I mean, yeah, I, I guess it could do higher resolution. So the uh, the background graphics on that, it looks like a nice looking city. It, it looks awesome. Look at that. Great graphics. Pretty sure that this car or all these cars are modeled off of actual real cars. I wouldn't be able to tell you which car is what, but I guarantee you they're all Japanese vehicles. So the drifting is kind of similar to like Ridge Racer. You have to tap the brake real quick, then back on the acceleration. Let's get away from this. Oh no! Hit the wall. Let's get as far away from that guy as possible. And then we can, uh,. Perhaps beat him, come in first place, that'd be awesome. There is literally a cop chasing me right now. So I guess these are definitely highway, Ill illegal highway battles. So a lot of the, the graphics get recycled, like the, of course the tunnels and all that stuff. But yes, really cool lighting effects. Uh, Sega Saturn probably does a lot of tricks to make all this stuff work, but... Look at the buildings, look at that, that is incredible. I'm crossing over a bridge right now. The bridge has a whole lot of detail. You can see the water on the other side. Look at that. That looks amazing. Got buildings up in the mountain right there. Kind of reminds me of something you'll see in Ridge Racer. And that's pretty much that. That's Togue King the Spirits. And there's also a second one. Which I'll, I'll do a separate video on that. Togue King the Spirit 2 for the Sega Saturn. Look at that. The first game... <sighs> Options was all in English. I guess they decided to go all out and uh, make the option menu completely Japanese. And I have no idea what anything says, so I'm gonna back out. We have to name the player. Oh god, that looks pretty cool. So I don't, I don't feel too bad if I lose. I'm driving the shitbox. 
Beast, the second Toke King the Spirit, the Sega Saturn. You can see that they have like a transparent window at the back window. Oh my god. Oh. I, I'm a horrible driver here in this game. This is bad. The game is not clunky, it's just me. I, I just can't. This game does use the 3D controller on the uh, Saturn side. I've actually tried that out. You can use the joystick. But yeah, enjoy the graphics. The graphics look slightly better than the first one. It, it actually looks really good. Like the road textures look really good. The scenery looks really good. Look at this. Let's try, uh, let's see here. Winter. In the morning. So I'm already sliding over the place. It's one of those tracks that are a little just a tad bit confusing because uh, there, there's like... Oh my god. There's a lot of different places you can drive on this track. Like multiple different roads and all that stuff. I don't want to say it's quite open road, but it's weird. We got the uh, legendary soundtrack from Toe King to Spirit 2. Sounds really cool. Oh, what the hell is that? That kind of confused me. It almost looks like there was a glitch. Like the 3D polygon was actually... And I lost. Which was expected. The, uh, the controls are a little bit harder on the second one. I think it definitely handles better on the 3D, 3D controller. You can get first person view and you see the rain hitting your windshield. That is cool. Look at that. Let's talk about detail, man. They added some really cool detail into the game. That was, that's actually way ahead of its time. The, uh, the dash graphics on this game kind of remind me of the old classic Need for Speed games. So they, they, this is the replay. And uh, you can see the windows, they kind of look transparent. You can see through there occasionally and see the actual person driving the car. The first game seemed like it was a little bit easier for driving, but this game, you definitely want to use the uh, 3D controller. So uh, the uh, D-pad, uh, it takes a little getting used to, as you can see here. We have a 1016 down at Saturn Jewelry Store. No suspect in sight. Hey, what the hell is that? Suspect down, I repeat. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> Second suspect down. What's up, dude? I need backup. Hey, stop it. Take that, you son of a bitch. Saturn Boulevard are cleared, and what the hell? Get you, we still need backup. Wait, stop <laughs> Please don't shoot me. I didn't do it. I shit my pants. Shut up and get your ass back. <laughs> you shot my brother, now I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're clear. Send the hazmat. Civilian shit themselves. Who's your daddy? I'll get you. You shot Johnny. Now I shoot you. Hey, I'll kill you. I'm trying to. Now you get to go to sleep. I see. What the hell is all that noise? Somebody stop. I feel like playing Sega Saturn. Look at that Sega Saturn introduction. Look at that. We have our loading screen right here, and what are we playing? And we're playing Virtual Cop for the Sega Saturn, and we have uh, some Japanese text right there, which I cannot read. If any of our uh, Japanese viewers can translate that for me. And here's the title screen right here, Virtual Cop. One thing that I like about Sega Saturn games are, if even if it's Japanese, it's still in English somehow. If that makes any sense. And uh, it's pretty much the same as the American version. And the beginner... Medium or expert? All right, let's check out the beginner first. And oh uh, yeah, whatever that says right there. Not loading. Yeah, here we are. And the virtual cop, what the hell is that? Yeah, it's like that, you son of a bitch. Yeah, what the hell? Bam, it right in your face. Yeah, this game is awesome. I actually own the real virtual cop on Sega Saturn, the Japanese version as well. And I have the light gun. But in order to play with the light gun, you need a CRT TV, one of those old tube TVs. You cannot do it on an LCD or LED screen, unfortunately. But here I am playing on a uh, emulator, and I know some of you don't like emulators, but I just don't have the room for looking up all my hardware. And I'm using a USB Sega Saturn controller, and it works perfectly fine. 
This is definitely a classic uh, light gun shooter. Not only for the arcades, but on Sega Saturn. And it was definitely one of my favorites. I believe the arcade version came out either in like 94 or 95. And it was definitely a big game changer for uh, the arcade because, you know, this was around the time where consoles and arcade was transitioning from 2D games to 3D. And this, back then, was a fantastic 3D looking game. Most of the characters actually look the same. They might have slightly different hair or whatever the case may be, but for the most part they're the same. You have to make sure you don't shoot the uh, innocent people. And this game is two players, so if you have a second controller, you can actually have a two plus here on the screen at once. This is definitely a must-have for the Sega Saturn if you uh, enjoy light gun games. And uh, light gun games are definitely not for everybody, but I've always been a fan of light gun games. Like on the PlayStation, one of my favorite light gun games on the PlayStation would be uh, Project Horned Out. That game is pretty awesome. What the hell is that? So you have some slightly different looking characters right here. They get a little bit harder as time goes by. I think I'm going to be playing an awful lot of Sega Saturn games this year. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a good thing because we have a lot of Sega Saturn fans on uh, Game and Blues Empire. I yeah, don't want to shoot that guy. Uh, he came pretty close. Look at that guy. Bam! I love that. It, only, it reminds me of like an action movie. It was like a complete stunt that he just pulled off right there. It looked kind of fake, but it was pretty funny. So on the uh, Sega Saturn controller, you have to hit C to reload. And you have to hit A to shoot. And this guy right here comes out of nowhere and hits me with a battle axe. He throws grenades at me. What the hell is that? Another cool thing about this game is you can damage the vehicles, which I think is awesome. So if you see a car parked over to the side, you can actually shoot it. And you can break the car. The window, the wheels, all that stuff. And look at this. Bam, I just broke the window. How do you like that? You know, this was actually one of the few Sega Saturn games that were uh, was available also in Korea. And uh, some of you may not know, but in Korea, they actually have Sega Saturn, or they did have Sega Saturn back in the day, but it was made by Samsung. And I guess it's got a game over. Wow, look at that. And right here is where you have to type your name in. So, uh, yeah, it was put in GPE for Game of Blusa Empire. Look at the bouncy letters. I'm in 8th place. Alright, so now we're going to try a medium mode and we'll see how that goes. So looks like we're on a construction site. Alright, here we are on a construction site and you see that. What the hell is that? Alright, let's we'll start shooting people over here. We've got the car right there, you can break the windshield. If you're like me, you like to shoot everything including that box and that, that red thing right there. And we'll see if we can re reload and shoot. Ah, I shot the wrong guy. What the hell? Uh, the graphics, I'm definitely a fan of the graphics. They look pretty cool for Sega Saturn. They have that nice mid-90s 3D look. Got that conveyor belt. It's actually moving. You have the really ugly, muddy-looking uh, construction equipment there. The ground looks nice, retro-looking. All the wooden crates right there, which we never know what's inside. Those are all retro-looking. Look like definitely... What the hell was that? He was inside the crate. How long was he hiding in there? Yeah, this guy just walking right down the conveyor belt. Actually, he wasn't walking because he's freaking lazy. And that guy just somehow magically appeared on top of uh, the construction equipment. He just got shot. This guy with the purple uh, headband. Macho Man Randy Savage. Stupid civilian. Get out of my way. Big dirt, you son of a bitch. Yeah. This is supposed to be a little bit harder than the last level, but so far as I've been... Definitely less than longer. Game in Blusa Empire catch freeze incoming. Three, two, one. Yeah, take that, you son of a bitch. All right, here's a. Whoa, whoa, what the hell's going on here? All right. So now we're sledding back down this uh, mount, the, mount of dirt, and we have more enemies. More mullet assholes. Look at them. Like they're all twins. It's like some Sega clone these guys. Some type of evil clone that was created by Dr. Robotnik. And you see that blue little crosshair right there? That means I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. And I'm shooting these guys with a freaking Sonic the Hedgehog gun. If that makes any sense. It's Sega. It doesn't have to make sense. You see that big ass truck? I see that big ass truck. Shoot the window out of that big ass truck right there. Hurry, you shot my... And these assholes up here don't like it that I shot their big ass truck. I do have a lot of enemies that pop up on the screen at once. And like just what happened right now. 
threw a battle axe at me and I, I got killed. And uh, there's a fancy little uh, Sega logo right there in the AM2. And just for the hell of it, let's try the uh, expert mode. And it looks like we're uh, actually in a city area. Let's check this out. Yeah, it looks like a city area right here. It looks like it said evil something. I'm not sure what the hell that sign said. Get to shoot out some windows, which is pretty cool. This actually looks like... The uh, beginning of uh, the area where uh, Fighting Force began, like outside that gate where you have to walk through the uh, entrance to that place, and yeah, it almost looks kind of similar to that. You know, Fighting Force was supposed to be on Sega Saturn. Maybe the, uh, I mean, look at that. Looks pretty reminiscent to it. Yeah, take that, you son of a bitch. And you see these guys right here look like they're wearing a little bit more armor. Uh, they still pretty much die just as fast. Whoa, what the hell? I just like how these guys just fly out of nowhere like they're ninjas. Like, just come out, look at it, bam, right through the box. That's actually one of my favorite parts of the game. I do remember that. Is that to keep going, bam, just shoot these red, bam, blow everything up. I love it. The Sega Saturn explosion looks awesome. 57.8% accuracy. How the hell is my accuracy better on expert mode? I feel like I'm playing Rainbow Six, but on the Sega Saturn. And now we have uh, some civilians that are dressed a little bit different. They're, they look like they're wearing uh, business suits instead of jumpsuits. And, uh, once again, you cannot shoot those guys, and there's a couple more right there. Because if you shoot them, uh, you screw yourself over, because you actually get a game over. Get out of my way, you bitch! There we go. And sometimes they get right in the way, and they ruin everything. And, uh, yeah, we have... More of these guys coming out, and uh, have to be real careful. Oh shit, that was close. And sometimes you have two or three enemies that pop up on the screen at once. So you have to really decide which one you want to hit. Because if you make the wrong move, like I just did, that's what happens. That's funny how they run too. Look at that. Oh, that guy almost got shot. What a lucky bastard. Yeah, come on, come on, walk it. Yeah, shoot these guys. He's still running! Man, for a guy that's about to get shot, he's... Casually, like, walking real slow. I mean, what the hell? Damn. Well, that's, uh, Virtual Cop. On the Sega Saturn. Uh, let's go take a look at Virtual Cop 2. But first, let me, uh... Enter my name in here. Let's see here. Yeah, hold on one moment. Before we get to Virtual Cop 2, we gotta do things the right way here. GPE Gaming Blues Empire. Okay, I only got four seconds. What the hell? Tenth place? Come on. Yeah, here we are playing more Sega Saturn. Look at that awesome Sega Saturn logo. Virtual Cop 2 loading screen. Nothing. Look at that. That looks so fancy awesome. Look at that. Yeah, we have the Virtual Cop 2 title screen. Look at that. It looks just as cool as the first one. I do uh, definitely like the stages on the second one better than the first one. So let's choose the beginner. Let's take a look at it. The enemies are dressed slightly different this time around. You might see a few enemies that look quite familiar from the first game. And you see that guy right there. That's a civilian. You don't want to shoot them, just like in the first game. If you do shoot them, they screw you over. As you can see in uh, Virtual Cop 2, you get a little bit slight different variety of uh, enemies than in the first game. You had a lot of repeats in the first game. and uh, In the uh, second game, you do get like repeats, but there appears to be a slightly large variety of different enemies for back then. For Sega Saturn standards. Virtual Cop 2 does appear to be a little bit easier to play. And there's a lot more things you can shoot as well. You can, sh you can shoot whatever that is right there. And this is a jewelry store. So you can shoot out all the actual display cases. Which is actually pretty awesome. And you can shoot the sh chandelier and bust the chandelier, which is pretty cool. And this is one part of the game that I really like. Because you can actually shoot the vehicles... You can blow the tires right off the vehicles. Let me see if I can give you a demonstration of how that works. 
Yeah, take that, you son of a bitch. That's crazy. The whole freaking car went flying. Look at that. That's awesome. I remember playing this back in the uh, the arcade, and I, I loved this game. This game, oh yeah. Look at that. I also owned the PC version of this back in the day. I remember playing this on the Pentium 1. Having the opportunity of actually having this game at home on your Sega Saturn, that probably blew a lot of people's minds. I mean, look at this. That's awesome. Look at that. The explosions look even cooler on Virtual Cop 2. Everything's on fire. This is awesome. The action. I cannot handle the action. Look at the fantastic Sega Saturn graphics. I feel like there's also a lot more detail in the graphics. What the hell is that? This time around, we'll check out Medium. It looks like we're on a cruise. All right, so here we are playing Medium. And right away, there's like a whole shitload of enemies that just popped up at once. You hear a bunch of birds screeching in the background. What the hell is that? It's a helicopter. I feel like I'm playing Grand Theft Auto. Look at that, you can shoot the freaking bushes. That looks like that. I had never even noticed that before. Look at that. That looks pretty awesome. This is the great example of how cool the Sega Saturn was. Look at the detail. Look at the little details on that. Now, if you get a Sega Saturn, an American or a Japanese Saturn, you can use the action replay cartridge to play imports. Uh, I have a Japanese Saturn. Most of my games are Japanese. I do have a few American games. You'll notice that when you play this game, you have to hammer the shit out of the buttons on your controller. Unless you have the light gun, of course, but... Yeah, you're gonna, your thumb's going to get a real workout if you're playing with the six-button uh, gamepad. Alright, let's try expert mode just for the hell of it. I have no idea what that says, but yeah. Bio 3. Alright, so here's expert mode. You have to be an expert to play this. We're in a virtual city, as you can see there. It looks like we're in a subway. You know, those guys look like they came straight out of Ninja Gaiden or something like that. What the hell? We're wearing ninja masks. You have to shoot real quick. You can also shoot the sign style. I do remember that. It's pretty awesome. Here is Street. Yeah, it's pretty hard. You have to be really on top of it. You shoot down the signs. That's what I like. I love shooting the uh, surrounding environment, how it reacts to the bullets that you shoot. And uh, for Sega Saturn, that's actually pretty awesome. And uh, much like the first virtual cop game, the uh, the enemies do react differently depending on which part of the body you shoot them in, which is really awesome. So they just don't generically fall over or whatever, you know, like most games back then. You shoot them in the arm or the crotch, the, the head, whatever. The leg, they actually react to where you shoot them. Look at that guy that's sitting there like nothing's happening. I mean, imagine they're like going from a Sega Genesis or a Super Nintendo to buying a Sega Saturn and experiencing this level of action. I mean, this will probably, like, back in 96, 97, this probably blew your freaking mind. I mean, look at this. I mean, sure, yeah, it's only a Lycon game, but the level of action that you're getting out of this game is... Freaking awesome. What the hell? Oh, he killed me with the battle axe. Son of a bitch. Well, that would be a uh, Virtual Cop 1 and 2 for the Sega Saturn. Uh, definitely uh, some awesome games. If uh, if you never got a chance to play Virtual Cop on the Saturn, I would advise you to uh, check it out. It's a very, very awesome classic Lake on game. Probably one of the best of all time. It's WWF in your house for the Sega Saturn. If you love WrestleMania the arcade game, well, why not play in your house? You can see right here I have the in your house disc. Right here, let's uh, pull it out and take a look at it. I don't have the, uh, the case or anything crazy like that, but this is the actual disc. In your house made by Acclaim and got the Sega Saturn logo right there, you got all the copyrights and the disc is kind of had better days but it still works fine. Looks like it's going to need a cleaning. So we'll probably give it a cleaning first. And woo, I almost dropped it. And that is that. 
pretty cool looking. Nothing really fancy. Nice shiny disc. So let's head over to the Sega Saturn and uh, play some In Your House. And uh, first we'll give it a cleaning and we will meet by the Sega Saturn in about two seconds. So you can see we have our Sega Saturn all set up right here, ready to be played. So we're gonna be inserting our In Your House game disc into our Sega Saturn. Here it is right here. We have our six button controller, our Sega Saturn Japanese controller right here. Now get ready to play World Wrestling Federation in your house. Let's head over to the CRT. Now here we have our selection of wrestlers. We got Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Ahmed Johnson. Uh, we got Undertaker, Ultimate Warrior, Triple H. Gold Dust, British Bulldog, uh, Owen Hart, and Vader. Let's go up to the top rope. And uh, let's see if we can. Uh, unlike WrestleMania the arcade game, this game has like some crazy venues. Now, Bret Hart versus Owen Hart, definitely some classic stuff there. I'm so used to playing like these type of games on the PlayStation that it kind of throws me off on the Saturn controller. Now, if this was a Street Fighter game, I'll be okay. Oh, what the hell was that? I have no idea what just happened. That was really crazy. Wow. That was insane. Oh no, the ultimate warrior is beating me up again. Look at him, he's trying to hit me and he can't. What an idiot. Oh, Bret Hart is trying to... What the hell is that? Like, there's a whole bunch of crazy stuff going on here. Sometimes this game doesn't make sense because you like jump around the screen so much. I think I killed Bret Hart outside the ring. And yeah, the surroundings are crazy because they have like different little. Let's look at all these people around here just dancing around. Just big ass old speakers. Look at that. Oh, how the hell do you do that? There's like some special move you can throw cards out. Huh. Oh my god. Okay, get up. Oh my god. And oh my god, what the hell? This might be the first wrestling game that allow you, allows you to fight backstage. How long does this tournament go? Holy crap. And right away, before the bell even rings, Vader attacks me. What an asshole. Oh my god, Vader just broke my everything. Oh my god. Oh, he turned into a bull. Oh my god. What the hell is he doing to me? Oh my god. That's it. Yeah, match reward is own heart. All right, let's have some uh, fireworks and all the good stuff. Wait, wait, wait. What's this says? You have defeated all to claim your right as the new champion. Something I didn't quite see all that. So my eyes were kind of bugging out. We're checking out some uh, Sonic R. And uh, Sonic R is pretty cool. But what happens when you combine it with the action replay? I mean, what kind of crazy shenanigans can we do with action replay? I usually use this to play imports, and this is an import, but is there any cheat codes or hacks available? 
Let's uh, find out. But first, let's look at the, uh, the label art. We got Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails running for their lives. Race for the goal with Sonic and his pals. You got some uh, screenshots back here, and this game is pretty cool. And uh, it gets the bad rep of being bad, but I actually think it's fun. You got the uh, color manual right here. But let's head over to the Sega Saturn and let's uh, check out to see what we can do with this. Get it all set up and pop it into place. All right, so I have our Sega Saturn right there, and we're going to be using our 3D controller because this game works better with the 3D controller than the uh, regular six button pad. We have to put this into the console right here. And then we have to take this out of its case, of course. And we got the disc right there. We're going to pop it in. And let's head over to the CRT and let's try out um, Sonic R. And of course, I have this controller plugged in, but we'll plug the other one in in one second. So stay tuned and let's play some Sonic R. The awesome uh, Sonic R uh, title screen right there, and we are using the 3D uh, Saturn controller, by the way. This is a lot easier to play than the standard controller. You know, the character models on these uh, characters, like Sonic, the uh, character models look really, really good on the Saturn. And, uh, the graphics on this game are cool. It's been a while since I played this game. Best bet is to jump across, like right here. Some people say that this game sucks with the controls, but I always had fun playing it. The controls are a little tough. It takes a little getting used to. This is actually the first Sega Saturn game I've ever seen, by the way. I went to a Funko Land when I was younger and I saw this on display and they had a kiosk where you can actually play it. And uh, this game blew my mind. I thought the game was so cool. And uh, we definitely came in first place. Now we have a uh, Prepare to Challenge and they have this really <laughs> grotesque looking tails looking creature. It's like a teddy bear or something. Ready, set, go! Let's see if we can make it to the end. This guy stands no chance. And this is definitely one of my favorite tracks. It's much more logical and easier to play on this track. And it's fun. I like the, the colors on it, and I definitely reminds me of like a Sonic the Hedgehog level that would be on the Genesis, but in 3D. And it looks really cool. And there we go. So it looks like we unlocked two characters. And I have no idea what this character is. This really weird looking character. I'm a little rusty on this track, to be quite honest. Your best bet is to take your time on this track, because it's very, very hard to actually go around this track at a fast pace. I have no idea if I'm in first place or not, but I think I am, according to what it says there, but sometimes with the game shark or the game genie on it doesn't quite accurately tell you if you're in first place. Alright, we, uh, looks like we did beat, well, it looks like Dr. Robot. I think that's Dr. Robotnik, Dr. Eggman, or whatever the hell you want to call him. Now, this is one track that I never really played too much of before, so this is going to be uh, an experience for me. That I can't really speak of. And I tell you, they have a pretty cool soundtrack. It's like a 90s uh, freestyle sounding type. Oh my god. And this game is actually really fun. I know a lot of people say it's really bad. But it's so bad, it's good. It's actually really fun. If you're not familiar with the tracks, you will 
make mistakes like what I just did there, you'll end up turning in, in a weird directions. So you have to be really familiar with these tracks. Oh god, it looks like knuckles. Or it's some sort of weird looking knuckles. So we can't make any mistakes this time around, because if we do. Oh my god, the computer guy will definitely capitalize. Okay, so far we're doing pretty good. So I think I'm pretty confident that I'm going to beat the beat, uh, this demonic looking uh, Knuckles. So definitely, I think it is Knuckles, but it will see us like darker eyes. Whatever the hell this thing is. I mean, this is Knuckles. But this is like a demon looking Knuckles over here. It's a, it's a bad Knuckles. Look at that thing. What we can do with the action replay on the Sega Saturn is quite interesting. Give a thumbs up and comment down below and let me know what you think. And not only will we be playing this game, this is, you know, this game is pretty awesome, but we're going to be playing it with the uh, action replay. And we're going to be checking out to see if there's anything that works on the action replay. Essentially, this is a Game Shark uh, with the House of the Dead. So, will it make our gameplay easier? Uh, let's find out. And that first of all, you look at the uh, the label art right there. We got a guy right there shooting the zombies. Look at the zombies. That's pretty cool. Got a couple of screenshots right there. And then look at that guy. Just look at that selfie right there. That's pretty ugly. Pretty ugly looking. You see that this case is cracked. It's not in the greatest shape. And that's what it looks like on the inside. Nothing spectacular. It's pretty beat up. So let's head over to the Sega Saturn and let's go have some fun and let's see if we can hack House of the Dead. You can see right there we got our NES and we got our Saturn right here. One thing we have to do is pop this in. Got our House of the Dead cartridge. There it is right here. Take this out and let's insert it. Apparently we have Sonic R in there. Alright, let's play some House of the Dead and let's we'll see if we can hack the game with the extra replay. Let's find out what it can do. Got House of the Dead and let's try to go into the arcade mode. Got the uh, normal stuff right here. Loading screen, very very bright loading screen. It's like you have to squint your eyes to look at that. And once you get to this point right here, it appears that the game bricks and this no longer functions. You can see that that guy is about ready to be killed by a zombie, but for whatever reason, the uh, the game does not go past that point. Action replay codes do not play nice with House of the Dead. So you're about to see the game works normal. That loading screen bugs my eyes out. Oh no! And this is, once again, the Japanese copy of the game. Except there is no red blood. And uh, I guess there might be some minor differences between this Japanese copy and the American copy. And the European copy was the... the Surprisingly, the uh, the Game Genie or Game Shark codes are very, very different. And uh, as you see here, is House of the Dead. What a great game! Let's see if we can play a little bit here, demonstrate how this game works. Got all these nasty-looking leeches, killer frogs. Look at this. You got that guy over there, that zombie. There's my character right there, gonna blast through the door. And then kick the door open. It would have been nice to actually get, to have this working with the, uh, the extra replay, like unlimited ammo, auto reload, you know, all that type of stuff. That would have been nice. You got a hole in the ground right there. It's, oh, what the hell? Hallway kind of kind of reminds me of um, like Resident Evil. What the, oh man, 
these creatures fly out of nowhere. You got these leeches, there's tons of leeches and also the dead. Nasty leeches. Alright, so where are we going now? We got these creatures that just jump through the window, some really weird looking creatures. They kind of look like, like monkeys or something, it's really weird. Those flying monkeys from Wizard of Oz. Gotta take the boss out. And there we go. Really disturbing noise that was. Horrible grunt made by that boss that just died. We got the uh, Japanese text on the, the top right side of the screen. Now that is pretty much House of the Dead. There's a lot more to it than that. But that is an example of the Japanese copy of House of the Dead and we tried to use the action replay and it failed. Did not work with us. So stay tuned for more episodes of Memory Lane and hopefully we can uh, get some more action replay action Hexen for the Sega Saturn. And as you can see there, I don't really have a case for Hexen, I only have the disc. Which is okay with me because I do not like those huge long cases that the Sega Saturn games came in. So let's take a look at the disc. It's rated M for Mature. It has the GT logo right there, the ID software logo, Raven. It has the Hexen logo right there on top. And on the side right here, you can see that it was probably around 96 that this game came out. It had the Hexen copyright 95, 96. Raven Software, you know, all that good stuff right there, and of course you have that thing that goes around the side right there. The disc itself is in good shape, there's nothing really wrong with it. You got the uh, cool Sega Saturn logo there on the bottom. So, let's head over to the uh, Sega Saturn and let's play some Hexen. I have a little demonstration as you guys see what the game looks like. And right away we have the enemy right there being beat by a club with spikes. So it's a very, very doomish looking game, of course, but set in a completely different settings with completely different enemies. And the storyline is way, way out there. It's crazy. So we're going to start the game right there. We're on the main menu. So before you play the game, you can be a fighter, a clerk, a cleric, not a clerk, a mage, and that's it. So for you guys who are a fan of Doom, this is a nice little treat for you. Playing Heretic on a CRT, straight from the Sega Saturn. The frame rate on this is a little iffy at times. But it's actually not too bad, it's playable. And we must have, there's a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat in this game, by the way, as you can see. Oh, what, what the hell? To get up close and personal with these guys. We picked up some, uh, what appears to be lotion. It's not really lotion, it's something else. I forgot, I didn't quite read that, but it was a bottle of something. There it is. The key. We must have that key. Oh my god, I almost died. We have another creature out here. No, the lighting effects are actually pretty good on this game. Yeah, take that. Oh. Got more, more, oh no. And this is where you have to strap around a little bit so you don't get cornered. You definitely need to get some health. Alright, let's see what else we got here. I think we've been inside here before. And there's another enemy running around over here trying to get me. And that's where the game gets a little scary because you're like, kind of like in a wooded looking area because you have trees. And uh, sometimes you don't see them coming towards you, so you can't break every single thing in this game. Let's open this door up. And let's get up to the top right here. 
have to fight our way to the top. And we have the bell right here. And see we're ringing the bell. You see that huge bell going back and forth. Okay, well that did something. So this game could definitely be a more confusing than Doom. So which uh, door do we go through? Uh, this is Heretic for the Sega Saturn. It's a pretty cool game. It definitely resembles, of course, the way Doom looks, but it's very, very different. And if you're not used to playing it like me, it could be very confusing on what you're supposed to be doing. You may have to watch like a walkthrough or you know, something like that in order to figure it out. But there's a, a lot of interesting things in this game that are quite a bit different than like your normal Doom type of game. Like you use like potions and all that type of stuff. 